Jays on Sportsnet. Presented by the all-new Civic, the 2016 North American Car of the Year. Welcome to Rogers Center on a beautiful afternoon. The roof is wide open, a little bit cool, 17 degrees. The Philadelphia Phillies shut out the Blue Jays. 7-0 last night, fourth time the Blue Jays have been shut out. They got some big hits from the top of the order. What about Herrera hit a home run in the third, and basically that's all the Phillies needed. Let's take a look at the lineup for Pete McKinnon's Phillies. They are four games under 500. What about Herrera over his last eight games, hitting 379, double home run. That home run came in last night's game. And then how about the DH? Ryan Howard homered off R.A. Dickey in last night's game during interleague play in his career. He's hit 37 home runs and driven in 106, basically in a full season's worth of games against the American League. It's like a full season for Ryan Howard. That's the lineup that Marcus Stroman goes against this afternoon, and he needs a big one. He needs a big start today. Everybody knows he's been in a little bit of a funk over his last five starts. He's failed to go. Six innings in four of those starts. Still a very good record at five and two. The ERA has gone up to 494. It's all about command and control, I think, for Marcus Stroman. Throw that sinker where you need to. Use that curveball. Spin it just a little bit harder, and you're going to be fine. Stroman is set. Herrera is in the box, and we are ready to go. Here's the first pitch of the ball game. Cut on and fouled off the wall down the third baseline. Herrera batting 314 for the season, six homers and 22 driven in. When he gets on base, when he's swinging the bat well, the Phillies win. He's hitting 350 in their wins. Ground ball, Stroman knocks it down, stays with it, recovers in time. Marcus Stroman showing his background as an infielder right there. Showing some quick uh, reflexes on the mound. When you let go of that pitch, you better be in position to catch the ball. And Marcus is, you can see, perfect position. So shows off that form. And then he doesn't panic. He picks up the ball with the bare hand and throws a strike over to first base to get the first out. So one down and get used to some ground balls. Marcus Stroman is the master of getting those ground balls. He leads the majors in ground ball percentage. Another ground ball right on cue. Travis in time. Two down. Well, if you're on the infield for the Blue Jays today, you better be on your toes. Let's check out the way the defense sets up. It's Sanders Pilar and Carrera in right. Bautista is still not ready to play in right field. Donaldson and Goins on the left side. Travis and an Incarnacion on the right side. And Russell Martin back behind the plate with Marcus Stroman. And with the problems with Jose Bautista having the DH, Edwin, he's healthy again. He's back in the lineup. He's got to go out and play first base. Justin Smoke is off today. Edwin banged his finger the other day, sat out yesterday's game, and he's fine today. The lineup took a long time to come out this morning from the Blue Jays. They're waiting on Edwin. They're waiting on Jose, trying to figure out if they're going to be able to play today. Day game after a night game. Quick turnaround in a 12-30 start. So both clubs just coming in, getting loose, and teeing it up. No infield. No batting practice. Nothing on the field today. Guys were rolling in around 11 o'clock today. This is one of those days where you just strap it on. Just play. Breakfast baseball. Both teams will jump on planes and fly to Philadelphia. They'll meet up again tomorrow night. Two games in Philly. One and two. Ground ball in Carnation gets a big hop. How about that start? Seven pitches, three ground ball outs. Marcus Stroman using that sinker early in this ball game.
at Philadelphia, and today they have Encarnacion back in the lineup, Russell Martin back in the lineup. So let's take a look at the lineup for John Gibbons, Blue Jays. Josh Donaldson in a two spot today. He's got a six game hit streak, batting 348 over those six games with eight hits, four extra base hits, and seven ribbons. And Russell Martin, we mentioned, he's back in the lineup. Things are starting to come around for Russell. His average up to 208 because of the last eight games in which he's hit 318 with a couple of homers and seven RBIs, and they will get their first look at the big rookie, Zach Eflin. Six foot six, Zach Eflin will make his major league debut right here. The Blue Jays are going to take the first look at him, and he's going to get the first look at a big league hitter. He becomes the fourth youngest pitcher to start for the Phillies since 2000. He's been with three organizations already. He was just drafted a few years ago by San Diego. He spent some time with Los Angeles, and now he's with Philadelphia. And it's a simple game plan for the, the young rookie today. He said, I'm going to use my fastball, and I'm going to pitch inside to some of these right-handed batters. Bautista late on that fastball at 94. Jose returned to the lineup last night. He had been bothered by a hip flexor issue, and he missed the previous three games against the Orioles. There's a slider Bautista gets a piece of it that ball bounced up and hit him in the cheek. That's a wake up call this morning. If you're not already ready to go slider down and away. Jose just barely gets a piece of it and then feels it as it hits him right on the right side of the face. Another 0 2 pitch. Trying to go inside, missed all the way across the plate, and Bautista stays alive. Eflin is from Florida. He was drafted in the first round by the San Diego Padres in 2012 as a compensation pick for the Padres losing Heath Bell. Still can't get that ball inside. Cameron Rupp, the catcher this afternoon, called for that breaking ball down, and Eflin has a major league strikeout. <laughs> Rupp threw the ball back to Donaldson. We'll talk about that in a minute. Let's take a look at the defense. Cody Ashi, Odubel Herrera, and Peter Borges in the octa from left to right. Andres Blanco continues to fill in at third base. Galvis and Hernandez up the middle. Tommy Joseph, the power hitting first baseman, and Cameron Rupp. The catcher for Zach Eflin. A changing of the guard, if you will, at first base. For 10 years, Ryan Howard was over there, but Tommy Joseph is now going to take over most of the playing time over at first base. Ryan Howard, the Phillies' second all time in home runs. Drive to right. This ball is troubled. It's going to land at the base of the wall. Borges has a strong arm. Donaldson's headed for second. He gets there with a stand up level. Seven straight games for Donaldson with a hit. And another double for the Blue Jays. They didn't hit the ball very hard in yesterday's game. They only got six hits. They were all singles by the Blue Jays to go along with five walks, but couldn't bring anybody around. He didn't waste any time picking on that first pitch and slicing it over Borges' head. Thought he had a shot at Donaldson, but he just couldn't get the good grip initially out of that glove. So Donaldson has a double. Edwin Encarnacion. Well, Eflin's got a story to tell his grandkids. His first major league game. How about striking out a two-time home run champ? And then he gives up his first big league hit to an MVP. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what happens when you play the Blue Jays, wow. right? Wow. There's hardware all over this team. Fast and furious. And now you got to deal with Edwin Encarnacion, who has 54 RBIs. Well, it's good to see Edwin back in the lineup yesterday, taking the big man out of the middle of the lineup. They just didn't have that punch. And Edwin has been swinging the bat. He's been red hot. And Connorsion just one off the American League lead in RBIs. He's one behind David Ortiz. And this is what's really surprising. Look at his numbers with runners in scoring position. Hitting 203. Still he's second in the American League in ribbies. He waves at that breaking ball and strikes out. So Eflin has two strikeouts against Bautista and Encarnacion. Before this year, Eflin was really known as a contact type of pitcher. 
threw hard but didn't get a lot of strikeouts. He made 11 starts in AAA this year. And now he is starting to miss more bats. 55 strikeouts in his 68 and a third innings down there. So you can see a good fastball with some movement and a breaking ball. That time puts away Encarnacion. Well, Michael Saunders will look to get the Blue Jays on the board here in the first inning. Two outs. Inside with the fastball. Blue Jays saw Jared Eikhoff for the first time last night. Now they're dealing with another newcomer. This one's got a little bit better arm, I think. A little bit more life to his fastball, and it's a developing breaking ball. Where last night it was a decent fastball, average fastball, but a very good curveball. And a lot more sliders. Sanders gets the fastball and fouls it back. That's one of the things that Michael Saunders has done really well this year. Heading into this series, and they've got stats for everything. But on a 94 mile an hour plus fastball, he came into this series fifth best in baseball, hitting 389 against that fastball. So that hasn't been a problem for him at all this year. This one slicing into the second deck out of play. Michael's got a seven game hit streak. He's 12 for his last 25 over those seven games. Fifteen of his last 32 hits have gone for extra bases. He's off to a great start to his season. 2-2. Two -two. Now it's a full count. Russell Martin is on deck. We mentioned Martin over his last eight games swinging the bat well. Everybody is starting to chip in and help out offensively. Their approach has been a lot better. They've been using the whole field with a little bit more regularity. Breaking ball gets hammered down the right side. Michael on his homestand has gone 10 for 17 with three doubles a home run and he's driven in four. Three two pitch. Well four threw him a change up. Super slow mo cam. Brought to you by Rogers 4K TV. Get closer to the action with four times the resolution of HD alone. Blue Jays trying to break through early with two outs. Russell Martin bats with two aboard. Martin's average up to 208. He's got a little bit more information than when this inning first started. He's seen. Eflin make a few pitches understands he's got a good slider. Well and he saw that he pitched to Bautista a right hander what he did there and Carnacion a right hander Donaldson a right hander. Plus he had the advantage of on, being on deck when Michael Saunders was hitting that was a long at bat for Saunders. So now he can pick one pitch out here one and oh you can sit on a fastball if you want to. Downstairs. Eflin made 11 starts, as Pat mentioned, in Triple A with Lehigh Valley. He had a 5 and 2 record. He pitched a total of 68 and third innings, allowed just two home runs. Did a good job of keeping the ball in the ballpark. Opponent's batting average at 199. Base hit. Donaldson's around third. The throw will not be made as Donaldson comes in to score. Russell Martin continues to swing a hot bat. The Blue Jays have a one nothing lead. He continues to swing a hot bat because he's a little bit more under control. He has slowed things down. Early in the year it looked like he was trying to pull everything and his head was coming off the ball. Now the swing is under control and he's thinking about the middle of the field. Watch this approach at the plate. It looked like a fastball away. He doesn't try and pull it. Gets enough of that. That head is right down on that baseball, and he just drives it right back through the middle. 
Herrera, the center fielder, comes in very slowly to get that ball. That allows Donaldson to score, and Saunders, Michael Saunders, goes first to third on that single to center. Yeah, that's a little surprising. It looked like Herrera could have charged a little bit and kept Saunders at second. Ezekiel Carrera back in right field again. Donaldson scores. And the Blue Jays continue to score effectively in the first inning. Donaldson moving up the leaderboard in runs scored. He now has scored 50 runs. That's good for fourth place in the American League. That on base percentage has got to be going up for Josh Donaldson. He's hitting and he's taking his share of walks. Josh looks like he's starting to come around and round into form. Ball on the strike to Carrera. Foul in back. We mentioned in last night's game that Donaldson has done a great job of combining hits with runs scored in RBI since 2013. Donaldson has 161 such games and he's just an RBI shy of stretching that out already. There goes the runner Martin and Rupp drops the ball and then kicks it out toward the mound. Martin will pick up his first stolen base of the season. Now there are two runners in scoring position. Russell now one for two. He had a walking lead over there at first base and Eflin just forgot all about him. So if you're going to forget about him at first base see what you can take. You can see Martin. Look at that. He's not even stopping. No chance to throw him out. Two and two chance for a big first inning here against the rookie Zach Eflin. Ground ball up the middle. Davis in time and the Blue Jays strand a pair but they get on top. Russell Martin with the RBI. He drives in Josh Donaldson who started his day with a double to right. Martin cashes him in. And Michael Walker was taken by the Cardinals in the 19th spot, and then Marcus Stroman. And today, the Phillies starter was 33rd. At that time, he was drafted by San Diego. He was a compensation pick, like you were saying, at 33. And who says you can't get some pitching late in the first round or in that compensatory type of draft area? Marcus Stroman, number 22 overall. Walker was 19, and Eflin was 33. Quite a contrast in physiques. Of course, Stroman about 5'9 and Eflin is 6'6. Six, six. Once again, proving that it doesn't make any difference in baseball how big you are, how fast you are, how strong you are. This is a big, strong guy, first baseman, Tommy Joseph. 
You know, that's really interesting what you were saying because baseball players come in all shapes and sizes, don't they? Your scouts better be pretty good and tell you what uh, what these guys can do. If, if they're strong enough to be able to, to win at the major league level. If you get a high school player like Eflin was a high school player, what's it going to look like four years from now? Is he going to grow to be six foot six and fill out? Tommy Joseph strikes out. That's the first strikeout for Stroman this afternoon. This Marcus Stroman start is brought to you by BioSteel Sports Nutrition, the natural choice for everyday performance. Drink the pink. Beautiful afternoon here in Toronto. The roof is pushed back wide open. Marcus Stroman has retired the first four batters he's faced this afternoon. Says Ryan Howard mentioned his great numbers in interleague play for his career. In a home run last night against R.A. Dickey, it was his 37th career interleague home run. Tough start for him in the average department. 24 but he's got hits. 10 home runs. 24 hits. 10 of them are home runs for Ryan Howard. He's been doing it a long, long time, and 10 years plus in the big leagues. This is his 11th year with. The Philadelphia Phillies. And he is climbing up the charts in home runs. There's only one guy he trails now in his career, and that's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, Mike Schmidt leads the Phillies all time in home runs 548. Then Ryan Howard, Dale Ennis, Pat Burrell, fine left fielder, and Chuck Klein. He too is a Hall of Famer. Pretty good slider right there. Just missed down and in. Two and two now to Howard. Ryan Howard's now 36 years old. He is from St. Louis. Went to Missouri State in Springfield, Missouri. Came right back with it and got the strikeout. Back to back strikeouts for Stroman here in the second. I had a chance to talk to Marcus yesterday and I was asking him about, you know, what's been going on, what's been going on through your mind. He says, you know, I, when I first came up to the big leagues a couple of years ago, I could really spin the ball. And because I've been throwing a lot of sinkers, I got away from my strength and my strength is spinning the ball for a breaking ball a slider and a curveball. So I'm going to use that curveball just a little bit more. I'm not going to totally junk or put away the slider but I'm not going to throw as many. I, my strength is throwing that curveball. He goes I'm always going to be a sinker ball pitcher because I love the sinker ball. I, I've just been getting on the side of the ball just a little bit more when I've thrown my sinker. This is Cameron Rupp, the catcher. He fouls it back. Sometimes you can be cursed with too much talent. Where Marcus Stroman can do so many things with the baseball, and you're right, he really caught the eye of the Blue Jays because he could spin the ball and he had good command of his pitches, and he really had a presence on the mound. Well, then, because he could do it, he developed a sinker and then fell in love with that a little bit too much. And, and if you can spin the ball your hand goes one way as, as you spin as you stay on top of it and then the sinker the hand goes the other way and, and I think he got away from his strength. He said uh, I have to concentrate on staying on top of the ball. Yes. And, and my arm slot has been all out of whack over the last four or five starts throwing it off to the side and. Ground ball Donaldson has it across the diamond and a low throw but no problem for Encarnacion six up six down with a couple of strikeouts for Marcus Stroman.
center with Zach Eflin making his major league debut this afternoon. I asked the Blue Jays how they prepare to face a guy they've never seen before. Now Kevin Pillar for one told me that he is a guy who relies heavily on advanced scouting and of course his coaches who then write up reports for the hitters. But Pillar said that for the most part coaches will give the hitters a lot of freedom to really feel the guy out in the early goings and until they can gather enough information they feel like they have to resort to the old adage see the ball hit the ball. Devin Travis who's on deck in this inning played against Eflin in low A ball and outside of being a good dude he told me that uh, Eflin does do a good job attacking the zone but it was years ago and he really needed to see a lot of video to see if he had made any adjustments since the last time he saw him Buck. Thank you very much Hazel good information and the Blue Jays they have their Triple A club in the International League same as Lehigh Valley but of those 11 starts he didn't pitch against Buffalo this season so there's no connection with the minor league triple A team for the Blue Jays. So no scouting reports to fall back on. How about this. Do what you did in Little League and in high school. See the ball. Pay attention on the uh, the bench over there and go up there and see it and hit it. Kevin Pillar. You Some, mean you didn't have video in high school. I don't think video was invented <laughs> when I was in high school back then. The you didn't have cameras? a scouting report in high school. No. No. And, and sometimes that's the best thing to do. Just go up there and see the ball. I think that's the approach that Kevin Pilar has had over the last week or so. And his numbers are starting to pick up. He's not trying to overthink the situation. See it and hit it. There's a drive deep to left. Stay fair, ball. Stay fair. And it is a home run for Pilar. Number five for Kevin. That's what's what you have to do I think if you're a big leaguer and you don't have any information on the guy just see it like you did when you were a kid and just let it go. He's been hitting that ball on the inner half just a little bit better than working in the cages hitting the ball out in front. What you don't want to do is you don't want to get beat by that inside pitch you got to shorten up your swing just a little bit. Fight the ball off you hit it out in front. And that's how you hit the ball out in front and it goes a long way when you do that. Kevin Pillar took an 0 for in last night's game. Snapped his mini hit streak. Watch where he hits this ball out in front of him. He doesn't let that ball get in on him where he can't extend. You want to extend out in front of you. And Brooke Jacoby was telling me yesterday that he hits the ball as hard as anybody when they're in the cage doing their cage work. He thinks someday Kevin Pillar's going to hit 20 home runs in the season. That was his fifth. He gives him 24 RBIs and gives the Blue Jays a 2 0 lead. Kevin Pillar in college hit in 54 straight games, and I guarantee you they didn't have video in college. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have scouting reports. They just went out and say, "What's this guy got? He got a fastball and breaking ball." Ground ball to second. Hernandez has it. Throws out his counterpart, Devin Travis. Well, your eyes were your video recorder, right? Your eyes told you what's what you needed to do in that batter's box. You didn't need to go and look at it on a television. I was a longtime coach for years with the Pittsburgh Pirates Rocky Bridges and Rocky Bridges had this great hitting philosophy. See ball swing bat hit ball run like hell. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something from Bull Durham. <laughs> right. Yeah Rocky would have been in Bull Durham. <laughs> been, yeah. This game is easy. Yeah. Ryan Goins a number nine hitter. Ball and a strike. Do it on to Ryan Goins. Blue Jays starting to show signs of turning things around offensively. We had mentioned the 13 doubles they hit against the Orioles. That ball is bobbled by Galvez. Boy, what a nice play. 
A broken mat one hopper Galvis right on the edge of the dirt put a glove on it bobbled it but then was quick enough to make a play and watch this reaction. He's got good hands good hands quick and he's got a plus plus arm for shortstop stays down on this ball you're just hoping that you knock the ball down you hope it goes into your glove but look at the reaction now there's the ball that's hand eye coordination right there to be able to pick it and then fire it across the diamond to record the out you can see he's still messing with his arm after that throw he had an awkward release on that throw and he's been messing with his right arm ever since that'll get the attention of the manager and the coaches. When you have a play like that you don't have a chance to set your feet. That was all arm strength right there and he's got a good arm. We've watched him now for a couple of days and I'm impressed with him as a shortstop. That goes off of Blanco. Bautista's on board. Galvis retrieves the ball in foul ground down the third base line. Bautista hit a hot shot right through the third baseman. Well they're starting to square him up that looked like a sinker on the inside part of the plate Jose can't get it airborne but it's right at Blanco and that will probably be an error. And if it is that'll be his third of the season just couldn't get the, the glove down quick enough and it went right through the wickets. That ball really hugged the dirt once it got off the artificial surface and stayed down in Blanco. Is charged with an error. Josh Donaldson. He doubled and scored in the first. <laughs> one on one count to the Blue Jays third baseman. Twenty two year old Zach Eflin. He's the 14th Philly to make his major league debut since the start of the 2015 season. You don't think they're in a <laughs> turnover mode there in Philadelphia. That's what I was going to say. That's uh, AKA for rebuild time for the Phillies. And they're doing it the right way. They're using their farm system They're They've traded away all their veteran players got younger players. Donaldson drives this one to the alley. If it gets by, Bautista's going to score. He's getting the wave around third. Donaldson will stop at second. No throw. In two at bats, Donaldson has gotten a hit, scored a run, and driven in a run. And that's his second double of the afternoon. Uh, you can always tell with Josh Donaldson when he starts to swing a hot bat, he's using left center to right center field. Everything is going right back through the middle. He'll pull the off speed pitch. But this time he stays inside that ball. You don't open up that front shoulder and he's driving the ball into the middle of the diamond. That ball hit the carpet and went all the way to the wall. That allows Jose to circle the bases. Second run of the inning, third run of the game for the Blue Jays. As we mentioned, Donaldson now has a hit. He scored a run and driven in a run. And since the start of 2013, Donaldson leads the majors with a game where he gets all three. He now has done it 162 times. And who are some of those other guys on that list? There are some who's who in baseball. Chris Davis is second. Mike Trout is third. Paul Goldsmith is fourth. And Jose Bautista is fifth. Pretty good list. And, Bal and Donaldson's top of the heap. Three nothing Blue Jays. And Canacion struck out his first time up. Pretty good breaking ball. Oh, and two. Center, not that deep. 
Herrera is there and he makes the catch with the Blue Jays scored two more in the bottom of the second. Kevin Pillar with his fifth home run of the season. Last year Pillar hit 12 in his first big league season. This home run made it 2 nothing. The Blue Jays now lead 3 nothing. Those big comfy green chairs in the TD Comfort Zone are guests of TD. And fans, a reminder, WestJet is now flying to Boston three times daily. Go to WestJet.com to book your flight to cheer on the Blue Jays at Fenway Park. WestJet, proud partner of your Toronto Blue Jays. Thank you very much, Hazel May. Beautiful day to be at the WestJet flight deck. And we want to remind you there's going to be another great game this evening. And how about a little Boston at Baltimore action? That'll be on Sportsnet later on tonight. Chris Tillman at eight and one against David Price at seven and three. So make sure you check that out. Of course, the Blue Jays have interest in that game. Both those clubs are ahead of the Blue Jays by three games. They are tied atop the American League East. This is the left fielder Cody Ashey. We mentioned Marcus Stroman won his first big league game in his second major league game pitching in relief in Philadelphia against the Phillies. In that ball game Stroman had pitched against the Pirates and Blue Jays scored a run in the tenth after Stroman had taken over for Drew Hutchison. Hutchison and Cole Hamels were the starting pitchers in that game. Ground ball, kind of shown. We'll step on first. But you know, Buck, at that time, this is a different type of pitcher than what the Phillies saw then. The Phillies saw then a guy who could really spin the ball, but now Marcus Stroman's got that sinker. And, and he was telling me, he says, I, I get into trouble when I get on the side of the ball like this and the ball starts coming off my hand and it stays on plane. He says, I got to make sure that I stay on top of the ball. Instead of here, I got to go here, get on top of the ball and make that ball go down. Same thing with the curveball. I've got to stay on top of it. When I stay on top of it, I can really drive that ball and get it off the, play, the hitting plane. And today he's been outstanding. They haven't got a ball out of the infield yet. Now, then when you take it off a plane, it's the plane of the bat that's the key. That you want to make sure that it has more downward action than sidewards action. In his last start, he, he got knocked around in a couple of innings. That did Marcus, but he was saying that there were a couple innings that I really threw the ball well, where I stayed on top of the ball and, and I started getting the sink that I needed to be successful. Peter Borges hits a little soft pop to shortstop. Two down, eight in a row, retired by Stroman. Well, there's the sinker right now. Beginning of the season, it wasn't there, but it's just his last five starts. He's been 
getting hit. It's been inconsistent. His arm slot has been a little bit inconsistent. He's been trying to throw it on the inside part of the plate and the outside part of the plate. Right now, he said, I'm just going to simplify things. I'm going to throw my sinker where I need to, and I'm going to throw my breaking ball where I need to. I have a philosophy about that sinker ball average this season. This is Peter Borges. He fouls it up. I think when we talked about Marcus he's a wonderfully talented athlete and he can do a lot of things and he developed that sinker and he thought if I drop it on the outside corner to right handed hitters I think that's a good pitch. Well, I think that's a terrible pitch. I think what hitters are looking for is the ball away and now you're giving them a pitch that's coming back to the middle of the plate coming back to their bats. Well, especially when you can spin the ball like Marcus can against right handed batters. He'll occasionally use that front door cutter also to right handers which is a pitch that really speeds the bat up to the righties says I'm going to keep it away from him now. That's the second pitch on my list <laughs> <laughs> that you want to eliminate that cutter on the inside the right handed hitters the other day they threw that to Jonathan scope on an 0 2 pitch you need a home run. Lead off man Udubo Herrera is on deck. There's his strike full count. Ground ball and Connor showed Stroman was late breaking and he's not going to beat Borges. Marcus Stroman hesitated for a second and Peter Borges just outruns him to first. And all it takes is just a little hesitation like that. You have to program your mind any ball, and I mean any ball or hit to the right side of the infield. Your first move has got to be over to first base. You can always put on the brakes and stop. And Marcus just hesitated for a second. Watch him on the ball to the right side. He hesitates and then oh says, okay. And by then, no chance to get Borges. And then he taps himself, saying, that's my fault right there. My fault. So now you have to deal with Herrera. Borges at first, two outs, and Herrera takes a strike. On his follow through, he stays on that front leg a little bit long. And that's the hesitation. That's all you need to beat out a ball on the right side. He comes right back and jumps ahead of Herrera 0 and 2. Gorgeous, the first Philly to reach base against Stroman, a two out infield single. Good time for a little sweeping curveball right here to get underneath that bat. Herrera gets a piece of it. That's what they had on their mind right there. Was the runner Martin's throw good throw but the tag a little bit late second base umpire Tony Randazzo called Borges safe and Goins immediately looked to the bench and say hey check that out Goins thought he had gotten him happens a lot right there you had a feeling that they might try and steal two strikes on the leadoff hitter you got some speed over there Peter Borges so he takes off on first movement. It's a tough throw, a tough ball to throw on. By Russell Martin, he does the best job that he can. Goins, watch him pick the ball and then put the tag on it. He might be out. Yeah, he got him. He tagged him on that right knee. One more time, he picks it, and then the glove is right there for the knee. That's in his, he's out. Wow, what a nice play by Goins, first of all, to take the short hop throw. But he had great position. He got himself in front of the base and able to make that catch and tag. 
This replay review is powered by Samsung. While the crowd's reacting to the jumbotron and the video on that, and the Blue Jays, they're walking off the field. They've seen enough. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't take them very long. This is exactly the shot they saw right there. He's tagging him on the knee, not even close to the bag. Blue Jays are walking off saying that should be an out. What a play by Goins. Picks it, leaves it right there, tags him right on the knee right there before he gets to the bag. So the Blue Jays looked up on the scoreboard, saw the video, and they all headed into the dugout. Peter Borg is still standing at second all by himself, not wanting to give up that stolen base. This is taking a lot longer than I thought it might. Probably just reaffirming that they touched him on the knee. Let's see. Out. There's the call the Blue Jays anticipated. Borg is caught stealing. That ends the top of the third. for the 2016 Junior Jays Club presented by Boston Pizza. This year's membership kit features a Blue Jays ball cap, sunglasses, backpack, and more. Exclusive access to members-only events such as a movie night and photo day with Blue Jays players. Purchase your membership kit at any Jays shop location or by visiting jayshop.ca. Thank you very much, Hazel. The next Junior Jays Saturday won't be until July 2nd against the Cleveland Indians, so you got plenty of time to sign up for the Junior Jays Club. You saw the kids in the upper deck. They've got all kinds of signs. A lot of schools in attendance today. Saunders lifts the fly ball to left. Cody Ashy over near the foul line makes the catch. One down. I always love these kind of days. It's a great atmosphere yeah. in the ballpark. And, you know, it's something that was unique to Exhibition Stadium. During the day games, the North Grandstand would be completely full of school kids. And the yellow buses would be lined up Everywhere. all outside of Exhibition Every. Stadium. It was quite an atmosphere. And, and loud. I mean, they really get into it. They've recreated that here on the day games during the week, and lots of kids still in school, but today they get a day at the ballpark. Russell Martin had an RBI in the first inning, and that gives him five straight games with an RBI. Second longest such streak of his career. He's taken all the way. Twice. The first two pitches in this at bat that Mark Martin just got up there and just said, I want to take a look at this, this guy. Martin's career high six games took place in his rookie season with the Dodgers in 2006. He hit in six straight games from June 6th through the 13th that year. Martin had a big cut. You no. pointed out how Russell stayed on that low pitch last time up and picked up the RBI single. Now get, go back to that two strike approach right here. Slow things down and have a good swing. 
Oakland have to overswing with two strikes. How about that at bat? That's a mark that works Eflin for the walk. Zach Eflin is making his major league debut here today. He's just 22 years old, and he is from the Orlando area in Florida. And he's had a lot of family and friends fly in for this debut. They're sitting there behind the Phillies dugout. His father's here from Florida. His sister Candace is here with him. Grandparents have been flown in and everybody's enjoying this major league debut they're not enjoying the score to this point but at least they get to see Zach make his major league debut on a beautiful afternoon when Zach got the call that he was coming up to the major leagues he tried to call his dad he called him like 10 times and he never answered he was out of batteries his cell phone he finally plugged it in and found out that his son was trying to get a hold of him and he said one word he said dad and he knew he knew he was coming to the big leagues. How cool is that? That's pretty awesome, isn't it? And now they're all here to participate in this great moment. Ferrer hits it high down the right field line. Borges at the track, at the wall. Goodbye, home run. Ezekiel Carrera with his second home run of the season, second on the afternoon for the Blue Jays. You know, he hit that ball so high, you just weren't sure if that ball was going to be able to make it, but he hit it in the right spot, down the right field line, high and deep, and it looked like the wind just took it and just carried it out of, out of the ballpark. Five-nothing Blue Jays, Ezekiel Pereira doing something again to help this team. Well, he does something every day, whether it's with his glove in the outfield, with his legs on the bases, or at the plate. Home run number two for Carrera. Pilar, he's hit the other home run. Another look at this mighty swing from Ezekiel. Well, he's watching this one and saying, stay fair. Kevin Pilar drops one into right center for his second hit of the afternoon. Carrera made an outstanding catch in yesterday's ball game, and now today with one swing of the bat, he's got a couple of RBIs. He's going to watch this one to make sure that it stays fair. You can see how high that ball is. Goes right on out of here. Well, there's nothing like a, a, a bench player getting a chance to play when one of the regulars goes down and then you do something to help the team. Most managers will tell you players on their bench that I can be first good defensive players. Then they say well, I don't want them to be guys that make mistakes that cost you games. But it's a real exception when you have players that contribute to a win. Pilar thought about running. That's a broken bat base hit up the middle. Pilar will stop at second. Devin Travis getting into the act. Devin is starting to hit the ball a little bit harder now with a little bit more consistency. He's staying up the middle again. Had a base hit in last night's game right back through the middle. In fact, he had a, an infield hit also. It's a curveball. He stays on it. That's his strength right there. Off the end of the bat, but he stayed on it. Didn't pull off of it. Heffler was thinking about maybe grabbing that with the bare hand. Second time through the order, the Blue Jays are four for eight against Heffler. So they got a little bit more information this time around. Five nothing Blue Jays. The Blue Jays were shut out in yesterday's game, seven to nothing. Only the fourth time they've been shut out this season. But last year, through the same number of games, the Blue Jays had been shut out just once. It was the eighth shutout tossed by the Phillies, which might surprise you. They are tied with the Dodgers for the most shutouts in the major leagues. That, that is surprising, you know, with all the young players that they have on that pitching staff. I don't think anybody was expecting that when the season started. 
Jared Eikhoff, Aaron Nola. Now Eflin contributing to the effort. He makes his first start, but the starters have been pretty good for Philadelphia. Adam, Adam Morgan, another young lefty that they have in their starting rotation. The veteran Jeremy Hellickson, Blue Jays will see him, and can't forget Vince Velasquez. He has an individual shutout. He's on the disabled list right now, but he is a good looking young pitcher. The Phillies have tossed eight shutouts. They've been shut out themselves three times, and they have just the one individual shutout. But Bob McClure on the left of Pete McCannon, the manager, he's the pitching coach, and he's been a very successful pitching coach for a long time. That's going to be exciting for a guy who's been around as long as him to now get to work with some young players and really mold their careers and teach them the right way. Young players are always willing to listen and to learn. It's going to be got to be fun for a coach. Lawrence hits a fly ball to center. Herrera is there. Pilar's tagging at second. Here's the throw to third, not in time, and Travis moves into second. An ill-advised throw from the center fielder Herrera. Yeah, that was a mistake again from Herrera. He's got four outfield assists. He also has six errors as a center fielder for Herrera. And really, you're not going to get Pilar. You're better off just kind of throwing the ball back into second base and keeping that second runner, that back runner, from tagging and getting himself into scoring position. So I'm sure he's going to hear that when he gets back into the dugout. In Herrera's defense, he is a natural infielder. He is playing the outfield just since he was drafted by the Phillies. He has made six airs, but surprisingly, four of those six airs have been fielding airs, not throwing airs. Nice block by Cameron Rupp, the catcher. Breaking ball in the dirt. So Bautista with a big opportunity to bust it wide open. Blue Jays already have a 5 nothing lead. He had a hot shot to the third baseman Andres Blanco in the second. Blanco booted it for the air. And now Blanco is deep at third base and I mean deep. Almost to the outfield grass. That was a shot that uh, Bautista hit to him at third base that went right through his legs. High fastball up and away. Ortiz has got a much better approach after a couple of at bats. He struck out in his first at bat. Donaldson is already connected for two doubles. Yeah, it's a big at bat, I think, for the Blue Chase in this game. If Bautista can knock him in, that's great if he can get on base, let Donaldson hit. He's hot. Mm. Full count two outs. Blue Jays have scored in each of the first three innings this afternoon. One in the first, two in the second, and two here in the third inning. Bautista takes ball four. Third walk issued by Eflin. Bob McClure on the phone. And he's going to go talk to Eflin as the bullpen will start to go to work. He better hurry. They only get 30 seconds now to talk to him. He's down to 18. Eflin right now looks like he's pitching away from contact, like he doesn't want to come into the Blue Jay hitters. Left-handed Brett Oberholzer is loosening up for the Phillies, and 
Mitch and left there to try to crank it up quickly. Well, you're right. The home plate umpire, Bill Miller, is out there. The clock has run out on the 32nd visit to the mound. And McClure turns and heads back for the dugout. Well, the Moon Jays have scored two this inning. Career with a two run home run. Pilar, his second hit of the day. He's at third. Travis singled. He's at second. And Bautista walked. Bases loaded for Josh Donaldson, who's already two for two. Don't try and do something. Just stay what you've been doing so far today. You got a couple of doubles. His last hit was a beautiful shot to right center field. Donaldson has the only Blue Jays grand slam this season. 14 home runs. Stick with your game plan that you've come to the ballpark with today. Off the plate. What it looks like with Donaldson. He's already had two doubles this afternoon. When you're thinking middle of the field and they hang you a breaking ball, because you're doing that, that front shoulder stays in there. You recognize the pitch and just the, the lack of speed speeds up your bat and you hit it out in front. That was a slider. They wanted it down and away. Cameron Rupp, the catcher, was set up down and away and it just hung, spun in the middle of the of the plate. And Donaldson, who's locked in, hit that one a mile. Watch this slider. It does nothing. They want it down and away. Stays in the middle. And he creams it to left field. And Carnacion drills one into the seats down the left side. Down the line. A lot like Pilar's, and that one just crosses. Before hitting. Donaldson's second Grand Slam of the season, third career Grand Slam home run. He now has 15 homers. He's had a five RBI afternoon. There's a drive to the alley and left. That ball's going to get down and go over the wall for a ground rule double. The Blue Jays are teeing off on young Zach Eflin. Pete McCannon has already made the call to the bullpen. Left handed Brett Oberholzer is ready and a disappointing Major League debut for a youngster. He'll have another day, that's for sure. Blue Jays have a 9 0 lead. Brett Oberholzer coming in. The Eflin family still enjoying the Major League debut. Not so much the results.
comes into the ball game taking over for the rookie Zach Eflin. Blue Jays have a nine nothing lead and Michael Saunders was the scheduled batter but Darwin Barney has come off the bench Saunders in last night's game fouled the ball off his right foot and it got him pretty good. So with this big lead early Saunders will sit the rest of this one out Darwin Barney pinch hitting. Yeah, Michael was hobbling yesterday in the ball game. So this helps nine to nothing. Darwin Barney. He's had a good start to his season batting 302. He is one for two as a pinch hitter. Six runs here in the bottom of the third. Ground ball to short. Dallas throws the first. Uh, Oberholzer closes out the Blue Jays. Big day for the offense. Nine runs on nine hits. Here comes the ultimate cleanup crew brought to you by Home Hardware's exclusive line of the ultimate. Hard hitting and tough on grind cleaning products. Michael Saunders fouled a ball off his right foot and it really hit him hard. Yeah, and he really felt that one right off the shin there. He tried to walk it off, finish the at bat, finish the game. But today, with a nine to nothing lead, you can get him off this turf, get him off that leg. He's going to talk to George Poulos, trying to feel better. And Darwin Barney stays in the game after he pinch hit for him. He's at shortstop. And moving from shortstop to left field, Ryan Goins. Gets his first action in the outfield this season. Odubel Herrera was at the plate when Peter Borges was called out after review of a stolen base. He overturned the call on the field, and Herrera gets to start this inning off. Marcus Stroman has allowed one hit, an infield hit to Peter Borges, and Stroman continued or er, contributed to that hit, and he didn't. Get a quick break off the mound to cover first. Oh, and two. Russell Martin wants it upstairs, and there's the fastball. Third strike out of the afternoon. This Blue Jays Rogers 4K broadcast is powered by the Samsung 4K SUHD TV. Beautiful afternoon here in Toronto as we get a good look at Center Island, Lake Ontario. Starting to warm up a little bit. It's a cool afternoon, 17 degrees at the start of this game. Ready Galvis, the shortstop, takes a strike. It's one and one.
simplified approach is working pretty well. Sinkers to the lefties. When he spins the ball inside to the lefties, it, it's a it's a slider or a curveball. That's going to be a base hit. Galvis hits the ball into right field. Carrera gets it back in. Second hit of the afternoon comes off the bat of the shortstop. It, his his pitches are in a better spot. He, he's been missing the glove over his last couple of starts also. And that goes back to the arm angle is not where it's supposed to be. Here's this good curveball. He catches too much of the plate with two strikes to a left hander. One but, out in the fourth as Galvis hits the first ball out of the infield. This one is a bouncing ball to first and Hannah Jones steps on the bat. Bonco's retired. So Stroman has kept everything on the infield except that base hit to Freddie Galvis. His first ball to leave the infield this afternoon for Marcus. And just some reassurance right here from Russell Martin. Hey, there's now a runner at second base. Marcus got over on that one. Look how quickly he bounces off the mound. And then stops it. This is just a reminder also that there's a runner at second base. <laughs> yeah, he got off the mound really in good shape that time. So here is the first baseman, Tommy Joseph. They acquired Joseph from the San Francisco Giants in the Hunter Pence trade in July of 2012. He was a catcher with the Giants. Also tried to backhand that ball, gets away from him. That'll be a wild pitch. In his first two years in pro ball, Tommy Joseph had some big home run seasons. Looked like he was going to be a power hitter. This ball spiked into the ground by Stroman. No chance for Russell to block it. Then he started having some concussion problems. Three different seasons he dealt with the concussion issues and he changed his position to first. He hits that slider in the air. No problem for Carrera Stroman. Four strong innings to start the game. He's allowed just two hits. Mr. Hockey has earned the respect of hockey fans around the world. Find out why as we celebrate the life of Gordon Howe with a special commemorative edition from Sportsnet Magazine. Available on newsstands Thursday. Bye. Thank you very much, Hazel. And you want to make sure you pick up a copy of that. That is a keepsake for sure. I'm sure they will do a terrific job of chronicling the great life and the passing of Mr. Hockey, Gordon Howe. Russell Martin's had a good start to his day. Picked up an RBI single in the first, walked and scored in the third.
Ball players should talk about batting averages, and Russell was on the interstate for a long time. I-75, I-95, now he's over 200. That's called head east, young man. Because <laughs> the set, you know, 70s, then the 90s are over on the east coast, a little bit higher. The 70s are in the Midwest, north to south. 3-0 pitch. Overholzer to Martin, taking all the way. 9-0 Blue Jays. There's his strength. Larry Boa. He's on the phone. He is the bench coach for Pete McCannon. And yesterday I mentioned this was the last season for Boa as a coach, and he corrected me. He said, You got some inside information? <laughs> <laughs> but I misunderstood Larry. He and I were together in Sacramento this past winter as he was inducted into the Sacramento Sports Hall of Fame for his great career as a player, manager, and a coach. And I thought he told me at that time that was going to be it, but he said, No, I have no intention of giving it up. He is a very good coach, one of the best coaches. Oh, yeah. So he was listening. He was listening. Some of his <laughs> friends, he said he got a lot of texts. He said, hey, You got some information that I don't know? <laughs> <laughs> we are from Sacramento. He's the reason I signed with the Phillies. He and John Bukovic were guys I played with in high school. And he was inducted into the Sacramento Sports Hall of Fame. And they asked me to come out because at that dinner, there were five players managers from Sacramento that all managed in the major leagues in 2002 five Dusty, managers Dusty Baker one of them Dusty Baker Larry Boa myself you get the next two can I get the next two uh, is it a long time ago no 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 you know them you played against them both of them <laughs> Carrera is called out on strikes you're just distracting me now. <laughs> uh, I'll think of them. Jerry Manuel. Okay. And Jerry Royster. Jerry Royster. Yeah. Okay. Played Five managers them. in 2002, all from Sacramento. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. From that area. Of course, it ended about June 3rd in that season. <laughs> when I got fired, there were only four then. <laughs> <laughs> One out for Kevin Pillar. Pilar is two for two. He has homered, singled, and scored a pair of runs, driven in one. It's a good lefty for Pilar to just stay on. Overholzer doesn't throw it particularly hard, likes to keep the ball away from righties. <laughs> Overholzer grew up in Philadelphia, in a suburb of Philadelphia, and his favorite player was Michael Bourne when he was a youngster. When he signed with the Braves, guess who he got traded for? Michael Bourne. That'd be like you getting traded for Willie Mays. <laughs> <laughs> I would not embarrass Willie Mays with that statement. <laughs> <laughs> the San Francisco Giants have announced they've acquired Buck Martinez for Willie Mays. I don't think so. <laughs> Never. Pilar fights it off, stays alive. It's one and two to the center field. Kevin Pilar's home run in the second, leading off the second inning, was his fifth of the season. Ezekiel Carrera has homered this afternoon, as has Josh Donaldson. Donaldson's a grand slam. And if you're wondering, has he had a multi home run game, Kevin Pillar? You have to go back about a year ago. Remember that? Turned his season around. Turned his season around. Turned the Blue Jays season around in Washington. Max Scherzer. This time he strikes out. 22 year old Zach Eflin made his major league debut here this afternoon, and it didn't go well. He struck out Bautista to start the game and then gave up his first major league hit to the second batter of the inning, Josh Donaldson. Two and two thirds, nine hits. He's charged with eight earned runs. He walked three and struck out two. He struck out Encarnacion, the third batter he faced. And things were looking pretty good for him, but then in that third inning, everything caved in on him. 
Ball started leaking up, and the Blue Jays had a little bit more information against him. He's going to be fine. You can tell he, he's going to be a major league pitcher, and I think he's going to be a good major league pitcher. Signed with San Diego, he was acquired by the Phillies in a trade through L.A. And Jimmy Rollins went to L.A. Eflin came to Philadelphia. They have accumulated a host of good arms. Mm -hmm. And they got Vince Velasquez from Houston. And they developed their Enola. They've got some nice arms. Did you mention Eflin was traded for Matt Kemp? Did you say he, he went from, went San, from Diego San Diego to, to L.A. for Matt Kemp? Right. And then here for Jimmy Rollins. So he's been traded for some studs. Five ball into center. Herrera calls for it. Or just pulls out of the way. We'll go to the fifth. It's all Blue Jays early. Now time for Blue Jays central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Samsung broadcast studio. your Blue Jays spirit. Enter the TD Comfort Zone contest by posting a video or photo of you tagging at Blue Jays and including hashtag TD Tuesday on Twitter or Instagram for a chance to win. For full contest rules and details visit BlueJays.com slash Comfort Zone. Well it's very comfortable here today. It is a beautiful afternoon. The roof is open and the Blue Jays have a 9 nothing lead which is very comfortable for John Gibbons. I haven't had too many of those games to manage. Seems like every game has been close for the Blue Jays over the last, I don't know, three or four weeks. When they really turned things around, starting in Minnesota on the 19th of May, there were a lot of close games. Mm -hmm. They really had a good stretch of well played ball games. I think that's why uh, the bullpen. Has been used so many times because it seems like every time they come into the ball game, it's a one or a two run game, and every pitch becomes super important. Ground ball, Donaldson at short throws Howard out. One down. But when you have these types of games, you can expand yourself a little bit, take a little bit more chances, a few more chances, be a little bit more aggressive. Catcher Cameron Rupp grounded out the third base back in the second. Stroman's been very efficient. Faced the minimum through three innings. That board just called out at second after a video replay review overturned the safe call in a stolen base attempt. Marcus Stroman has been working hard to sort things out. As we mentioned, he had had a real rough stretch of starts. And you go back and look at his last three starts coming into this game. 
against the Red Sox here he gave up seven earned runs in five and a third then five six earned runs against Boston at Fenway and then last time out against the Tigers gave up four more earned runs and he had failed to go six or more innings in three straight games and four of his previous five starts coming into this game. I said Detroit of course it was Baltimore who was here at the last start he made that was on the ninth in a six five loss. And he's been working hard you know trying to figure it out and one of the things he was saying he said might have to just simplify things just a little bit he was using that four seam fastball that time to go upstairs and then try to go back downstairs with the curveball. He'll he'll figure it out. He's just too talented of a player. He was saying that start you were mentioning in Minnesota when he pitched into the eighth inning. He told me he threw about 80, 80 something percent, just over 80 percent fastballs in that game. Just kept using that sinker. Didn't need to go to anything else. He said, I got to mix things up just a little bit more. Use that sinker, but yeah, I got to spin that ball a little bit more. Let's take a look at his last five starts. 13 starts this season. The first eight were outstanding. 3 5 earned run average, 220 opponents batting average. But the last five, you just talked about each one of those. The opponent's batting average of 350. Just wasn't hitting his spots, trying to be a little bit too, too fine, I think, instead of sticking to his strengths. That's a, another thing that he was talking about. He says, I got to pitch to my strengths, and that's my sinker and my curveball. What's really interesting for Stroman in my mind is how much differently he pitches here at Rogers Center compared to what he does on the road. His ERA is over three runs higher here at Rogers Center for the season. This is his eighth start at home. He comes into this game with a 644 earned run average at Rogers Center 340 on the road. I never understood that. I think it's the turf. I think it's a little quicker on the artificial surface. He throws a lot of ground balls and they get through for base hits. That's it. I could buy that. I could go with that. And just remember how many ground balls early in the season snuck through for base hits. I think it was a combination of the artificial surface and the infielders getting used to the dirt. <laughs> but he actually called out on that inside fastball. It's time to convert your big outdoor tasks into short, effortless work. Make the great outdoors even greater with Honda Power Equipment. Well, if you can't be at the ballpark, why not jump on a boat? Take a little spin around Center Island. Beautiful day for that. Ground ball. Travis waits. He'll shovel to second. That'll end the inning. Hernandez out on the fielder's choice. And at the bottom of the fifth, Marcus Stroman shutting out the Phillies on just three hits.
action tomorrow afternoon. It starts at 3 Eastern, 12 Pacific. The Yankees are in Denver to take on the Colorado Rockies. Ivan Nova at 5 and 3 will go up against Chad Bettis at 4 and 5. The Yankees and the Rockies tomorrow afternoon. Peter Boyd just moves from right field to center field. Jimmy Paredes, who was with the Blue Jays earlier this season, takes over in right. Herrera is out of the game. <laughs> Brian Goins now in left field is 0 for 2. He started at shortstop. Holzer has been around for a few years. He was also part of that trade that came. He came from the Astros and came to the Phillies in that Ken Giles trade. If you remember that last December, that was a huge trade. I thought for the Phillies because they got Vince Velasquez, they got Mark Apple, who was a very high draft pick for the Astros one year, a couple of other minor league pitchers, and then Brett Oberholzer. For Jonathan Arez, a shortstop, and Kenny Giles. Kenny Giles close it. It's just not working out for the Astros. What a haul for the Phillies. They did their homework. Yeah, and when you got an arm like Velasquez, as we mentioned, he is currently on the disabled list, but he got off to a great start with Philadelphia. We saw him in spring training and went, wow. Bowens gets a base hit. Past Hernandez in the right field. That's the tenth hit for the Blue Jays this afternoon. Ryan Goins joins the hit group today. He had a battle back after falling behind 0 and 2. Stay right on that one. First base hit. He got robbed of a hit his first time up by the shortstop. Look out. Bautista has to bail out quickly. All down around his ankles. Slider, you see he's got that high leg kick. He's got to get that front foot down quick and then get out of the way quicker. That right there is called moving your feet. Number hitter. Pitchers always want to move the feet. Back him off the plate. Two and oh, Oberholz are behind Bautista. There's a strike. Oberholzer. Like so many left handed relievers began his career as a starter. Made 122 minor league starts. Bautista fouls it back. He's made 42 major league starts all with the Astros. Now he's working out of the bullpen here with the Phillies. Last season he started eight games for Houston with a two and two record. He's a long man out of the bullpen. This is his job right here. If the starter gets knocked out early, come in, see how many innings you can give me. That starter background certainly helps him. Bautista lifts a high fly to left. Cody Ashey is there. One down. Drive of the game is brought to you by the all new Civic. 2016 North American Car of the Year. This is going to be a grand drive of the game because the sacks are full. Josh Donaldson comes up, hits this hanging breaking ball down the left field line. It's a granite. 
Grand slam home run for Josh Donaldson blows this game wide open. That is this afternoon's drive of the game. One of three home runs the Blue Jays have pounded out here this afternoon. Donaldson drives this one to the alley. Paredes is there. The right fielder makes the catch. Ball hung up on Donaldson. He's retired for the first time this afternoon. You know, but what a swing by Donaldson. He is getting locked in. Like a lot of the Blue Jays this year, there was glimpses of these hitters getting hot. And they get hot for three, four, five days, and they cool off again. The way he's attacking the ball right now, along with Encarnacion and Martin, this looks like it could be sustained for a while. They could they could be hitting like this for three or four weeks. Encarnacion had a double to left field his last time. Oh, he's got a good swing on that first pitch. Three doubles and three home runs again this afternoon. That's a good sign for the Blue Jays. It's what they did against the uh, Orioles and taking three out of four, wasn't it? Doubles and home runs. Chris Tillman starts tonight against the Red Sox. Sox will send David Price to the mound, so the Blue Jays will see Chris Tillman next time they play in Baltimore. Sunday. They missed him in the four-game series over the weekend so they'll see Chris Tillman who is eight and one. But the Blue Jays have a lot of confidence right now playing against Baltimore. They lost the first game on Thursday and then won the next three against the Orioles. They pounded their in between pitchers if you will the guys at the back end of their rotation. And gave Ubaldo Jimenez his shortest start of his major league career. He lasted just one third of an inning when they scored five runs in the first. See if he gets that start. Let's see if he's pitched on Sunday. He should come back on Friday then. I know they had an off day yesterday. I wonder if they, they end up skipping Jimenez against the Blue Jays. Looking ahead to Friday, Aaron Sanchez is scheduled to start against Mike Wright for the Orioles on Friday night. Then on Saturday, it's a four o'clock start. R.A. Dickey, Giovanni Gallardo is the scheduled starter for the Orioles, and Sunday, the series finale. Marcus Stroman against Subabu Jimenez. That's the scheduled starter for the Orioles. It's a Pop up to shallow left. Galvis hustling back makes the catch the shortstop out in left field. Carlos Jones retired. The Blue Jays leave a base runner. We'll head to the sixth.
Weekend's MLB All-Star Game ballot is here. Head to BlueJays.com to choose your All-Star Game worthy stars and send them to the MLB All-Star Game presented by MasterCard on July 12th in San Diego. Vote today, vote tomorrow, vote at BlueJays.com slash vote. Fuck. Uh, it's always a great event and the fans are certainly involved in the voting process and certainly want to make sure that you include your Blue Jays on that ballot. The voting is out. Josh Donaldson is currently third in the voting at third base. Manny Machado has a comfortable lead over Mike Moustakas who's out for the season and then Donaldson is third. I think there's a battle in the outfield as Bautista is currently sixth, but he's within striking distance of a starting spot. Borges hits this one to right and watch out. He can fly. He's headed for second. He's going to breeze over to third. Carrera gets the ball back in, and Peter Borges has a leadoff triple. Second hit of the afternoon for Peter Borges. Uh, Zico Carrera had to make a split second decision here. Do I try and die for that ball and catch it? And if I can't catch it, can I block it and keep it in front of me? He comes charging in from right field. He dives, but he just can't get the glove and block that ball. The ball is slicing away from him and Borges shortens up his swing, sees that that ball is down. Now he's thinking three, minimum three, maybe even inside the park home run. Look at those strides, long. Strides and he makes it easily to third base. Jimmy Paredes spent some time with the Blue Jays. He got into seven games, had four hits and 15 at bats, including a home run. Blue Jays tried to put him on waivers. He was claimed by the Phillies, and here he's. Hits the ball down the left field line. Borges is in to score. Paredes is headed for second. Here's the throw from Goins. It's not in time. You know, he got caught up in a numbers game with the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays needed a, another player. He was a pitcher, so they had to expose him. And this is a good fit for Jimmy Paredes on a National League team. He's a switch hitter. He can hit. He can sit around for a couple of days and then come off the bench and pinch hit if you need him to. This is his first at bat of this series. Slices a double to left field. It's a good pickup by the Phillies. So the Phillies are on the board. A leadoff triple and an RBI double. <laughs> Freddie Galvis had a base hit in the fourth off Storm. This is where if you're Marcus Strome you got to limit the damage right here. He gave up the triple. And then the double. See if you can leave him standing out there. It's just missed the outside corner. Top of the six, Marcus Strowman staked to a very big lead early. Has thrown the ball well this afternoon. Three and two to Galvis, the third baseman, Andres Blanco, is on deck. Martin had that foul tip go off his glove. Oh, that would have been nice right there. Looked like it was ball four. Galvis swung at it and just barely got a piece of it. And Russell couldn't hold on to it.
Sturman wants Galvis. Let's see. First walk of the afternoon issued by Marcus. The all new Civic, the 2016 North American Car of the Year. The Blue Jays are wrapping up this six game homestand. They went three of four against the Baltimore Orioles last night. They lost seven nothing to the Phillies and they have a nine one lead as we speak and John Gibbons has just told Dane Johnson he wants to start the bullpen right to the phone right there. Marcus can get out of this because he's got that great sinker. If he can get another ground ball, they've been hitting it on the ground all afternoon long. That would go a long way to help him get out of this inning. I think there's something else going on in Gibbons' mind as well, trying to put a positive spin on Marcus's outing. Having finished up on a real high note, he's only thrown 79 pitches. That's the first out of the inning, the strikeout number five for Stroman. Well, he said, I can throw the curveball and I'm going to use it at times versus the left handers. Watch him get on top of this. He's always been able to spin a curveball. Look at the break right underneath that swing. First baseman Tommy Joseph. Popped in the air. Fly ball to right. Carrera battling the sun. He's got a beat on it now. Makes the catch. Joseph's retired on the fly ball to right. Boy, that's a hopeless feeling, isn't it? When you're an outfielder like that, you got the high sky. There's no clouds up there to give you some depth perception. So the ball goes up, and that's right into the sun field in right field. But you know what Carrera did there? He's got his glasses on. He just kept moving, and, and he positioned his body where the sun wasn't right where the baseball was. Kept moving, and finally picked it up and made it look easy. So Ryan Howard will step to the plate with two aboard and two outs. Here's Carrera getting an angle on that high hop fly. Just keep moving. Keep moving so that ball gets out of the sun. Got your glove right there to shade. Right hander Jesse Chavez loosening up for the Blue Jays. Now it pulls it foul. Mickey Morandini makes the grab. He's the first base coach. Former Blue Jay Juan Samuel is the third base coach. They got some great coaches don't on they? their staff, don't they? Yeah, it's really a very experienced coaching staff. Pete McCann, the manager, has a lot of guys to lean on for experience, ideas. Not a bad idea right there from Marcus Stroman to throw one up and in to Ryan Howard. Just back him off the plate. You can see he's way off the plate. Maybe he goes with that little sinker down and away now. Down ball. Barney. Nice play from the outfield. Good scoop at first. Edwin Incasio. Helps out Darwin Barney. Barney was deep. At second, shifting over from his shortstop position, makes the strong throw, and Edwin Encarnacion digs it out. Good range by Barney, and he shows off that strong arm and a good scoop over at first.
schedule ahead brought to you by WestJet after this two game series this afternoon Blue Jays and the Phillies will fight a Philadelphia Marco Estrada will open up against Jeremy Hellickson and Jay Happ and Aaron Nola on Thursday night then the Jays go to Baltimore three game series have an off day on Monday Arizona in town for a quick two game series and another off day before they go to Chicago Chicago uh, James Shields pitching for the White Sox now not having much fun right now a rude return to the American League for Shields now when Barney pops it up into the outfield Thomas makes the catch here's the rest of the four game series in their pitching matchup Estrada and Hellickson tomorrow night a couple of change change up type of pitchers change up curveball pitchers and then Jay Happ returns to Philadelphia where he started. He was their sporting news rookie of the year in the National League when he was with the Philadelphia Phillies. A few years ago. Jay Happ was a draft pick of the Phillies. Third round pick in 2004. He had a great season 2009 with Philadelphia. He was 12 and 4 in. 23 starts 35 games overall. We get to see Marco and Jay both former National Leaguers swing the bat. Next two nights. I think Jay had a hit in San Francisco didn't he. Mm -hmm. And when you're getting ready to play interleague game the pitchers get to come out. They get the, on that machine. First of all, they have to bunt. They got to practice bunting with Tim Leeper. Get the the bat head out. Get it down. Bunt a few, and then they get, can commence the hacking, which they do. They love to go out there and hit. Also, Martin fights it off and fouls it into the seats. Jay Happ has 27 career sacrifice hits, so he can handle a bunt. He had a hit in San Francisco. He went one for three in his start against the Giants. Jay Happ hitting 093 for his career, but he has a home run. Martin hits it into center, and Borges, he can really play center man. He turned and ran back to the spot where he anticipated that ball would come down. He gets great jumps, great reads in the outfield. You know, he reminds me of Devon White when he plays center. I mean, he has such an instinctive approach about playing it. He turned around and just ran right where that ball was going to come down. Playing on the right field, if you're going to compare him to, to Devo. Ezekiel Carreras had a good day at the plate. He homered in the third with a man aboard. His second home run of the season. He now has five RBIs. Borges came up with the Angels, right? Yeah. So they had Borges in center field. They had uh, Randall Grichik was over there, wasn't he? He got drafted by the the Angels and some guy named Mike Trout in center field. They did a pretty good job. I think they, and that's where Devon White came from, right? Yep. Devon White and Gary Pettis were both center fielders in the Angels system. Carrera has another hit. This one against the lefty. Carrera's done a terrific job hitting against left handed pitchers this season. He came into this game batting 462 against the softball. Well, he just doesn't give any ground to left handers. He doesn't try and pull the ball. He just slows everything down and lets that breaking ball get on him. Look how deep he hits that ball. He's been playing some pretty good baseball, I think, for the Blue Jays. He's been getting a lot of playing time with some of the injuries to their outfielders. Kevin Pilar homered in his first hit bat, a leadoff home run in the second inning, and then had a single to right center in the third. He's got his third hit. Slices it to right. Carrera will stop at second. For Pilar, that's his fifth three hit game of the season. His first since May 5th. It's 
great approach that he has had recently. His home run went down the left field line. He also had a single and, and slices that ball to right field. No time to think about anything. Just see the ball and just let it go. Twelve hits now for the Blue Jays. That's a big number for the Blue Jays. Anytime they get double digit hits, they win a lot of those games. They're 13 and 5 when they have recorded 10 or more hits this season. Last year, they were 55 and 12 when they got double digit hits. It's a good sign that they're starting to use the whole field, take what the pitcher is giving them. If they pitch him away, hit the ball the other way. Devin Travis just trying to catch up to the rest of the league. Got a late start coming back from that shoulder surgery. Didn't have much of a spring, didn't participate in the Blue Jays spring training. He was in rehab mode. Shot that handcuff Joseph and all hands are safe. Boy, that's another good approach by Travis. He stayed on that ball away and hit it hard on the ground. That's his strength. Three pitches that were away to Devin Travis didn't try and pull it. Looked like the runner might have distracted Joseph, the first baseman, a little bit on that one. Watch Kevin Pilar at first base. Right into the path of that ground ball and it handcuffs Joseph. It's an error on the first baseman. Now the bases are loaded for Ryan Goins. He picked up a single in his last at bat. It's the first air of the season for. Tommy Joseph. Second air for the Phillies this afternoon. Blue Jays had a grand slam home run in the third off the bat of Josh Donaldson. For Donaldson, his third career grand slam. You know, one of the improvements that Brian Cohen's had last year, especially the second half of 2015, is his ability to hit left handed pitching. Stayed on the ball just a little bit longer, hit a lot of balls to left field against left handed pitching. It's a great chance for him right here. Pulls that one to first. Joseph gets another chance and handles it cleanly. Blue Jays leave the bases loaded. We head to the seventh. Nine one Jays.
DirecTV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you've come to expect and more. Watch every out-of-market game live in true HD on over 400 supported devices. It includes a free subscription to AtBat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Right now, this is the only game going on in the majors. Blue Jays and Phillies playing an afternoon game. Everything else will take place under the lights. Cameron Rupp, the catcher, he's one for two. Phillies have a run on five hits. Marcus Stroman, a little bit of trouble in the sixth inning. He gave up a triple that was a line drive to right. Carrera left his feet, tried to make a play on it, got past him. Peter Borges went all the way to third and scored on the double by Paredes. Good pitch. You know, one thing I've, I've noticed also this afternoon from Marcus is how well he's working with Russell Martin. He's not shaking him off. He, he is going with the game plan. He's going with what Russell has been calling all afternoon. He's been outstanding. Yeah, and you know, we mentioned it right at the top of the show. This is the 38th Major League start for Marcus Stroman, and why not follow Russell Martin around? Russell's got plenty of experience and he's had a reputation of turning clubs around. He helped the Yankees pitching staff when he went there. When he went to Pittsburgh, he made them a totally different ball club and he's had a dramatic impact on this Blue Jays. Dodgers, all the great pitchers he caught with the Dodgers, so why not? Rep called out. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership. Drama with six strikeouts now. Marcus has picked up the tempo a little bit this inning. I think he sees the uh, finish line and, and he wants to sprint through that finish line. Finish strong. Keeping that ball down. That's a change up. Two down here in the seventh. <laughs> Cesar Hernandez, the switch hitting second baseman. Marcus season high this year in innings pitched in a game is eight. He did that in his first and his third starts of the season. Don't know if they're going to be able to do that today. He also went eight innings against Tampa Bay on May the 1st. Colton Murray starting to loosen up for Philadelphia. Aaron Loop, the left hander, loosening up. Chavez was up earlier. He has taken a seat. The ball hit deep to right. This ball is gone. Caesar Hernandez hits his second home run of the season. It comes with two outs here in the seventh. It also came with two strikes on, on the batter, and he tried to rush a fastball on the inner half to see if Hernandez, who is a free swinger, would take it. And he didn't. He got a strikeout earlier in the game against the left-hander Cody Ashey on a fastball on the inner half. 
And he wanted to do the same thing here. Two seamer. But it just comes back out over the middle of the plate. Just the second home run of the season for Hernandez. Peter Borges chops one. Not there handed by Donaldson. And I've said it many times. Nobody makes that play as well as Josh Donaldson. Strowman seven innings. He's in line for the win. Colton Murray coming into the ball game. Jays on Sportsnet. Presented by the all new Civic, the 2016 North American Car of the Year. The third pitcher for the Phillies has taken the mound here to start the bottom of the seven. Colton Murray making his 15th appearance of the season. Played his college baseball at the University of Kansas. He's actually from Olathe, Kansas, which is right outside Kansas City. Pretty decent fastball, curveball, and a changeup. He's pitched in 14 games this year. 11 of them have been scoreless. One inning guy. He gets the seventh inning against the Blue Jays, and he gets to face Jose Bautista. Red Oberholzer did a nice job giving the Blue Jays, or giving the Phillies, Three and a third out of the bullpen. High fly ball to left. Bautista got under it. Ashy is there, and that's the first out of the bottom of the seventh. The Blue Jays will wrap up this six game homestand, making three of four from Baltimore. Looks like they're going to split the two games against the Phillies. They got a tough road trip coming up. Phillies in their ballpark and then three big games against Baltimore what you don't want to do is you don't want to start thinking about the weekend series in Baltimore against the Orioles still two big games against the Phillies before you head there. Going to have two tough mound opponents in Philadelphia and Jeremy Hellickson and Aaron Nola two totally different types of pitchers but of course. Hellickson has faced the Blue Jays a lot. He came up with the Tampa Bay Rays. He was the rookie of the year in 11. And I think Nola beat him last year, didn't he? In Philadelphia last year? I think he could have, yes. The Phillies, they've been very pleased with their pitching. Of course, today they had a young pitcher, Zach Eflin, making his major league debut.
Nola pitched against the Blue Jays but did not get a decision in his start last year and five innings Donaldson's aboard for the fourth time with the walk. Jeremy Hellickson. He's made nine starts against the Blue Jays. They have hit just 213 against him. He's a tough opponent. It's going to be a lot like Marco Estrada. Tries to take the sting out of your bat by using a slow curveball and a change up. You know what a game like today does for John Gibbons? Rests his bullets down in that bullpen for the road trip. Yeah, you never know what tomorrow will bring, and anytime you can have your starter give you seven innings, that's a real bonus. And then you've got the added bonus of a seven run lead. You don't have to use those high leverage relievers you can save them for the road trip. Russell Martin had an RBI single in his first at bat today. He drove in the first run of the ball game for the Blue Jays and for Russell and gives him six straight games with an RBI or excuse me five straight games with an RBI one off his career high. He looks like he's starting to heat up offensively. So is the guy sitting next to him, Devin Travis. Edwin had a double in the third inning. The Blue Jays sent 10 men to the plate in the third inning. Scored six runs on five hits. Haven't scored since. There's a deep drive to center. Borges back looking up. Goodbye, home run. Mm -hmm. And Carlos Jones at it again. I think he heard you. They haven't scored since, and then wham! Edwin is in one of those grooves right now where the home runs they come in bunches. 16th home run of the season. How many on this homestand for Encarnacion? Blue huh. Jays are now up 11 to two. Some happy fans with a souvenir, and with that two-run home run, Encarnacion has just taken the lead in the American League in RBIs. He leapfrogs over David Ortiz. Tries to throw a fastball. He wanted that one away, and it came right into his sweet spot. Everyone was telling me around the batting cage the other day. He says, when I get my pitch, I can't miss it. I've been missing it. Well, what a homestand he's been on. He's not missing it anymore. Well, when he starts hitting them out the straightaway center, you know he's locked in. We saw him hit an opposite field a little one not long ago, and that one is deep into the seats. And the party is on. That group of youngsters having a good time. We got a souvenir home run ball. That is his fourth home run on this homestand. He's only played in five games. Excuse me, 16 Bob. home runs, 56 RBIs. And ball is lined to the third baseman off the bat of Darwin Barney. Five games he's played. Remember, he didn't play yesterday because of the finger issue that he has. You can see it's a little swollen back there. Five games, four home runs. Uh, he knows he's starting to heat up. He doesn't want to miss too many no. at bats. <laughs> oh, and they're heading to a couple of ballparks that are known to give up their share of home runs. Russell Martin. He has walked twice. He is one for two on the afternoon. Edwin will go to Philadelphia along with the Blue Jays and play two games there. He's played 18 career games at Citizens Bank Park. He has 10 home runs. Stay tuned, folks. <laughs> and he'll be playing first base. I asked Gibby about that. You know, you keep him in the lineup. What do you do? Put him at first base. And there you go. 
He's the leader of the pack. It took him a while, but he is on top ahead of Ortiz Cano, Trumbo, and Betts. That's where he should be. He's one of the best run producers in the game. One and two to Mark. Foul tip held on to by Rupp. That'll end the seventh, but some more fireworks for the Blue Jays. They pounded out four home runs this afternoon. They've hit for the home run. And set out today to make some adjustments, and boy, Pat, he made some very positive adjustments. Yeah, he was pounding that strike zone, and he's using that sinker and the curveball. He simplified everything, and now his numbers look like we saw Stroman early in the season. Seven innings, just six hits, a walk, six strikeouts, two earned runs, charged to Marcus. Threw exactly 100 pitches, 60 of them, 68 of them for strikes. So he is in line for the win. That would be his first one in four starts. He turns it over to the bullpen. Aaron Loop out of the bullpen. This is the seventh time that we have seen Aaron. He pitched it the game yesterday, just one third of an inning. Gave up a hit and had a strikeout. So Loop comes into the game to start the eighth inning, and he'll deal with Jimmy Paredes, who had an RBI double, his only previous at bat. Paredes came in the game defensively, moved into the leadoff spot. Herrera out of the ball game. This ball is hit high and deep down the left side, and that ball is going to be foul into the second deck. Aaron Loop, chance to. Put together a good inning here. Fastball is foul straight back. It's one and two. It's a foul ball. Two and two. It's 11 to two for the Blue Jays. Bradis has his second hit of the afternoon.
expenses and save during the DIY Expert Sale. Only at Home Building Center and Home Hardware Building Center. Lots of kids on hand here at Rogers Center this afternoon for this 1230 start. A lot of schools in attendance and it's been a good afternoon. That ball gets away from Martin and Paredes will go to second. You know that was the first hit that Aaron Loop had given up to a right hander this season. It's only six at bats. Try to slip a fastball in there and he tried to do it again. But yanked it. Russell Martin couldn't come up with it. Now the double play is taken out. That's what's up to you. Talked about the size of Lou. You know what you want to have when you come into games like this are quick innings. Just keep the pressure on that opposition and just pound that strike zone. Right after that hit by Paredes, Gavin Floyd gets up, starts throwing. That ball is a foul ball as Freddie Galvis got out in front of it. There is Gavin Floyd who's up and starting to get loose. John Gibbons was talking about him before the game today. Say he's starting to transition into a reliever. Remember he's been a starter his whole life. In fact he started with the Phillies. And he's learning how to get ready quickly in that bullpen. As opposed to a starter who will have 15 or 20 minutes to get loose down there. That's off the end of the bat. Paredes is headed for third. Now this is thrown out by Travis. That's the first out of the inning. Broken bat grounder to second. One more time off the end of the bat. And he can't come up with that soft line drive. But they do record the out over at first base. Andres Blanco has gone over three. He waves at that first pitch. Phillies have seven hits. Paredes has two of those seven hits, and he's only had two at bats. What have we said about players wanting to play against the teams that got rid of them? Jimmy Paredes could hit. Unfortunately, there just wasn't room on this team. They had to make some of the changes. Get the extra reliever up here. Paredes got caught in a numbers game. Well, and the problem, too, is he doesn't have a real defined defensive position. You can get by with that in the National League because the, they use the pinch hitter so much. The looper in the right Carrera is there. He makes the catch tagging and coming home is Paredes. He scores ahead of the throw. As that gets Blanco and Order BI on the sack fly. <laughs> Top of the eighth inning. Now it's 11 to 3. Tommy Joseph is 0 for 7 so far in this series. I mean, he struck out three times. Got off to a nice start in his Phillies career here this year. You got to take a look at him. Ryan Howard's contract is basically up after this year, and they need a replacement for him. He's got power. There's no mm -hmm. question about that. Seven home runs. Since coming up to the big leagues. Brian Howard. Has had a terrific career. He is second on the franchise home run list. Second only to Mike Schmidt. Ground ball Donaldson. Backs up takes the hop throws him out. 
So we'll go to the bottom of the eighth. Blue Jays with a comfortable lead. Now time for Blue Jays Central Update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the same. Player. Meet the future of your team at the 2016 NHL Entry Draft. All the action starts June 24th, right here on Sportsnet. Fuck. Thank you very much, Hazel May. Beautiful afternoon for baseball here at Rogers Center. A lot of fans out in attendance. Nearly a packed house as a lot of school kids have come out. This is Elvis around with his 6 7 left hander. 6 7 274 is what he's listed 1 and 0 in his 22 games. He was originally signed on his 16th birthday by the Cleveland Indians. He's got a pretty good arm a fastball that has hit the upper 90s and slider and a change up needs some work. He's got to be able to throw strikes a little bit more consistently. But there's no question he's got a good arm. Philadelphia signed him as a minor league free agent. He's had Tommy John surgery. He's had shoulder issues. He just hasn't been able to have a very healthy run. Yeah, he had that Tommy John surgery. I told you he signed on his birthday when he turned 16, pitched that year, and then missed the next two years because of Tommy John surgery. He's an interesting guy given his size and the dramatic angle he creates at 6 7. Ezekiel Carreras had a two hit game, including a two run home run way back in the third inning. Blue Jays have hit four home runs this afternoon. Pilar got it started with a solo home run, then Carrera hit. A two run home run in the third. Donaldson at Grand Slam also in the third. And Encarnacion hit a two run home run in the seventh. Blue Jays have hit 11 home runs on this homestand. And they're going into two hitter friendly ballparks Citizens, Citizens Bank Park and Oriole Park at Camden Yards. You know the consistency that we're starting to see with every Blue Jay at bat it's been a lot better. We saw glimpses of it. Josh Donaldson had a four hit game in San Francisco. The ball is skied to right field. But we haven't seen it maintained by the Jays over the last two weeks. Everybody's starting to get into the act. Good at bats lots of doubles home runs. Opposite field hits, a lot of good things going on in this lineup right now. We mentioned Encarnacion has hit so well at Citizens Bank Park. Ten home runs, 15 RBIs, and just 64 at bats. Ten home runs and 64 at bats. 
He might leave early. Beat the team there. <laughs> Edwin has also hit 16 home runs in Camden Yards, Oriole Park at Camden Yards, but he has played 56 games there. So he's going into two ballparks where he's put up big numbers and he's swinging the bat well right now. And he'll get to play some first base. Don't forget your first baseman's glove, no DH in Philadelphia. Kevin Pilar one and two stays alive. Kevin's had a three hit game his fifth three hit game of the season looking for his first four hit game of the year. He's had one four hit game in his career. He'll have to wait another day for his second. The all new Civic, the 2016 North American Car of the Year. Second baseman Devin Travis playing is just in his 18th game of the season. This is game number 67 for the Blue Jays. That's counting spring training. And that is about a spring training for Travis. And you can see his, his stroke is starting to get there. A little bit more consistently hard contact. Fouling off some tough pitches. That's right where everybody thought he would be. Now he had a tough bout with that shoulder injury. It was undetected for a long time as to the root of the problem. But Brook Jacoby, the hitting coach, anxious to have him back and glad to see the timing, the rhythm, everything starting to come around for him. Well, there's no question he can hit. Just give him some time. They rushed him up here with the injury to Troy Tulowitzki. Tulowitzki is scheduled to play tomorrow down in Florida and hopefully that will go smoothly and he is within probably a week of returning to the Blue Jays barring any setbacks came out of the game the other day when he said just didn't feel right didn't have a quote setback he just said it just didn't feel the way it's supposed to feel so not wanting to risk anything he got himself out of that ball game and he'll start it all over again tomorrow Devin Travis has his second hit another base hit to right he's two for five this afternoon Brian Cohen started at shortstop. He's now out in left field. Michael Saunders was removed from the game earlier, and we have been given an update that he left with a right hamstring issue. Might be a result of him favoring that right leg after he got hit on the shin with that foul tip in yesterday's game. Makes a lot of sense if it is. You know, we're saying that the Blue Jays from the top of the order all the way down to the bottom of the order. The bats are better. Their approach at the plate a lot better. There hasn't hasn't been one inning today where there's been a one two three inning. That's how consistent they've been offensively. Well, the Blue Jays leave a runner on here in the bottom of the eighth. Gavin Floyd going to come out and try to wrap things up here this afternoon.
Brock Osmack and Ken Reed, they are here in the front row taking in the game, getting prepared for their Forsyth Central work tonight after the Boston Baltimore ball game. We are in the ninth inning, and what a beautiful day to pick to come to the ballpark. Blue Jays have scored 11 runs on 14 hits, and how about Gavin Floyd? Coming in to face the Phillies. He was selected by the Phillies in the first round. That was fourth overall in the 2001 draft. He has spent time in Chicago. And now, for the first time, he gets to face the team that drafted him. Ryan Howard goes after the first pitch, and it's a high fly ball to center. Pilar makes the catch one. Floyd was traded from Philadelphia to the Chicago White Sox along with Gio Gonzalez in exchange for Freddie Garcia December of 2006. Most of Floyd's success came with the White Sox his career high in wins 2008 he had 17 wins in 33 starts. He had some fun with Ryan Howard there if you saw him. Rounded first base, he had something to say to him. So you can't take me deep on that first pitch. What are you doing? Cameron up the catcher. He's one for three. But these have three runs on seven hits. The Blue Jays have 11 runs on 14 hits. Ball to right. Should be an easy play for Carrera. And it is two down. You know, there's some time when you transition from a starter to a reliever, everything is different for you. And Gavin Floyd, one of the things that he has learned, had to learn to do is come out of the bullpen and pitch out of the stretch. He was out of the windup for his whole career when nobody was on base, but now as a reliever, chances are you come in with runners on base and He's always been a maximum effort guy. You see now nobody on base. He's out of the stretch. Gavin has dealt with so many tough injuries throughout his career, including Tommy John surgery, broken elbow twice, shoulder problems. But he's worked through them. Cody Ashi Swings and misses, and the Phillies are down to their final strike. He was getting a lot of work early on and just ran out of gas. John Givens gave him about eight days off. And the fastball and the breaking ball is back now. Bounced out in front of home plate. Marcus Strowman will pick up his sixth win. Against two losses. Stroman goes seven innings, allows two runs on six hits. Marcus threw exactly 100 pitches, but he leaves this ball game with a real good taste in his mouth. He simplified things and had a very good outing. Much sharper. I mean, he hit his spots. Didn't yank pitch out of the pitches out of the strike zone. He hit Russell Martin's glove and he followed his veteran catcher all afternoon long. This should do it. Ryan Goins in left field is there. Gavin Floyd three fly ball mm -hmm. outs in the ninth and the Blue Jays win it. A lopsided win 11 to 3 against Philadelphia. That's exactly what uh, the Blue Jays needed after last night's 7 to nothing loss to the Phillies. They needed a starter to come out here throw up some zeros. Marcus did that through the first five innings. They needed some runs and some runs quickly. They got the four home runs from the offense today. 14 hits 11 runs. Give them a little momentum as they head out on the road for a big road trip to Philadelphia in Baltimore. Tomorrow night we'll be in Philly. It'll be Marco Estrada against Jeremy Hellickson. Good afternoon for the Jays. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.
Here's Jamie and Greg in Blue Jays Central.